I am Jen Strait with Complete Payroll. And I'm Lee Martin from Ally HR Partners. And today we are at Poplar Hill Estates in East Aurora. It is a wedding venue, a beautiful wedding venue. Yeah, gorgeous. We are in actually the farmhouse now. Uh, we had a tour with the bridal suite. Maybe our Mr. Joe will send uh, ha have some video of Images, the whole yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole thing. Beautiful barn right now, high ceilings, beautiful lights, string string lights. That's right. Beautiful um, outdoor venue as yeah. well. Swings, so that's tens, yeah. you know, the whole nine. So up to two hundred people, I think, can you can have an event with up to two hundred people at this venue. That, so if you're looking to book a wedding this year, next year, that's right. Still spots available. It, it's beautiful, and we're probably gonna come back here in the fall because this would just be a beautiful shot outside. Mm -hmm. But that's when the bees are coming, so we're gonna try to avoid August. You know how I feel about bees. I know. I was thinking August about that. We are driving here today. August is <laughs> outdoor shoots are so, always really <laughs> right. Well, the bees aren't too bad right now. But um, yeah. Poplar Hill Estates is also the uh, sister company of Illuminated Landscapes. So we want to thank uh, Phil Calaruso and Penny Jensen for having us here. Um, Phil has been in the business for he's a multi award winning. Ah. Oh. <laughs> light, light, lighter, light, professional, landscape professional lighter? light, landscape lighter. Yeah. Um, he's been in the business over 30 years and has done some beautiful work. They have, um, what did uh, Penny say that was called? Where in Chitawaga, probably by the time this airs, but they oh, have like a, garden, a garden, a garden walk, walk thing, in Chitawaga, yeah. and he has done multiple, um, multiple houses within the garden walk. Yeah. So, so if you're he, looking to spruce up your outdoor, um, Situation, I guess. <laughs> and outdo your neighbors. Yeah. And they're, then they're all going to be asking. Is paint your world with light. So indoors, outdoors. They do the outdoors, but light it up. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Check out their website. Uh, we'll have that provided here on on uh, both Poplar Hill Estates and Luminant Landscapes. We'll have that on the page uh, below our video. But let's hop into it. Yes. I always say let's hop into it. I don't know how else to start it, but let's get started. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's dive uh, let's in. Just, it's let's summer, dive right? in. Yeah. It's summer. Yeah. Dive in the pool. I love it. Diving in, yeah. All right. T Emily, what are we talking about today? Today, we are going to light up your world with, there you go. with. <laughs> some best practices <laughs> on employee leave. It's something we kind of touched on in another episode, Jen. We were talking about kind of the, the heightened awareness or the increased prevalence of employee medical and personal issues and mental health issues coming into the workplace. And um, we touched on some leave obligations of employers in that, but today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the actual best practices that we'd recommend for you to take a look at or consider or at least make decisions on and put in place so that when you are doing this, you, you stay out of trouble, but also do the best thing for your business and your employees. Yeah, and just to be clear, we we have had some videos that talk about very specifics of FMLA and PFL and COVID leave mm -hmm. and what qualifies for what. Um, this is more of a what to do when you need to leave as opposed to the specifics of of leaves. I mean, we'll talk a little bit yeah. about that, but this is of, you know, everything that kind of plays a part with, with yeah, a leave and what you need to do. setting up an infrastructure, right? Because I think there are so many different leaves out there now, whether it's disability or um, FMLA, and that actually gets us into not the kind of the first point here is, first of all, just knowing what it is that you need, are obligated to provide leave-wise, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's um, an employee's own medical condition that you need to provide disability leave for or FMLA for, or a lot of people now are taking advantage of uh, New York State paid family leave, which is caring for a loved one that has a health condition, or most commonly the maternity paternity benefit that comes with child bonding with that. Um, you need to understand based on your business size and the employee's length of service and different things like that, what um, you're required to provide and what the employee is eligible for. So. We won't go into like the really detailed nuance of it in, in this video because that would probably be boring. Yeah. Um, but there is a really great, and we've mentioned it in some other videos, PDF mm -hmm. on my website, LIHR Partners, with a chart. So at least if you're a New York State employer, it breaks down all the different um, obligations side by side, comparing them to one another, eligibility-wise, benefit-wise, all of that. So know at least what you need to do at first. And I suggest going to that right now, pausing the video, <laughs> go and find that and just print it out. Put it in your office yeah. and have it because it's a great reference to have. And when this comes up, you're going to be trying to find what we were talking about. And it's going to kind of, you know, have a little bell that goes off. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that you can refer to all the time, whether, like I said, hang it in your office or have it in your desk drawer. But it will be so convenient when an employee walks in and tells you a situation and you can kind of just reference it. We try to make it a one pager. It's a lot. So you mm -hmm. probably print it on legal size. But, yeah, you can get it down. 
which as opposed page. to illegal size. Yes, we right. we are talking about all the legalities here. <laughs> Soon there will be illegal size. The paper <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So once you know what you need to do, kind of the second pointer that we want to um, give you is having a set plan. So there are a lot of obligations that come with these different leaves in terms of how much time in advance people need to give you uh, notice or request, or how much time you need to give employees to complete the paperwork. All these different rules, uh, but there are a lot of a lot of people don't understand or realize there are a lot of decisions that you can make as an employer to set up kind of an infrastructure or policy structure for how you want to manage and administer the leave. So outlining some policies in advance, even in the handbook, Jen, mm -hmm. um, it's something that usually doesn't make it in the handbook when, with a lot of these providers that create very templated standard handbooks for clients, um, but really making sure that you outline in advance who they need to request leave from, what paperwork needs to be filled out, that kind of stuff. Um, but then other decisions, too, that you need to make about if employees need to apply any accrued time off during unpaid portions of leave, um, requiring overlaps of leave, so if they're qualifying for disability and FMLA, do they need to use both at the same time, same with paid family leave and FMLA, really good suggestion, but these are all decisions you should outline ahead of time so that when you um, enforce these things, you can point to the policy if an employee has an issue or tries to challenge them. And I think it's a good point that there are decisions to be made. It's not always black or white of, of overlap yeah. or, um, you know, the, the procedures and policies. Like there are when you have a qualifying instance, yes. but there are some things that you can overlap and some things that you can't. And you want it the same across the board. Um, you want it in your handbook because even if you have different HR people, that come through, you don't want them giving the employees different answers. Mm -hmm. So you always want something that you can refer to that um, everybody is looking at and there are no instances where they're getting different answers and then one feels that they're getting a yeah. special treatment when it was exactly. an honest mistake. Sure. Yeah, and one of the things actually that hits the payroll space quite a bit with this is making a decision about um, how you're going to handle different benefit premiums while an employee is on leave. This is a really good tip that is probably worth its own weight in gold, um, just because a lot of uh, employers don't think about this. So obviously when an employee is on leave, they're not being payrolled through you as an employer, right? So you're missing out on taking that uh, employee's portion of their benefit deduction, whether it's medical, dental, vision, whatever it might be. Um, and so where does that cost, you know, where does that money come from then right so you want to outline how employees have to pay for that when they're on leave and things like that as right. well that's a great point because that's not something that anyone thinks yeah about. and that could be like a family plan like a thousand dollars a month right. that you just end up eating so right. um, that's significant obviously all right so on that note um, when you make these rules and um, set these policies you want to make sure that all this is included in the documentation you provide when an employee requests leave or when you designate leave um, and just on that note you want to get the designated the, the documentation right in general so there is a ton again of very specific required documentation for all leave types so just Disability has its own paperwork and paperwork and write statements you have to provide FMLA, PFL. But in addition to that, it's really good to develop supplemental paperwork that outlines straight to the employee very clearly. Here's the obligations and the terms of the leave. Here's the, the responsibilities you have while on leave to pay your premium, to use time off, whatever it might be. So establishing almost like a cover letter, Jen, that goes with the rest of the paperwork is really good. Again, it just sets clear expectations keeps things consistent. No one can argue that they didn't know about something up front and just protects you in the long run. And here's the thing, it, it's hard for the person who's wearing the HR hat to get all of that done because there are different things that need to happen for PFL and right. FMLA and who, who you're reaching out to and what the employee signs first and what the you know, employer signs and, and who sends in the final paperwork, all of that. Um, so it's a great reference for you to have at, if you have your HR hat on. But if you think it's hard to keep track of all of that the employee has almost yeah less than zero <laughs> experience in it so you really need to outline of, of what to do and you want to make it easy for the employee because if you don't make it easy for the employee it gets it's it's going to be more work for you on the back yeah, end. yeah things will you know? be delayed and, yeah. and that's never good in terms of attendance violations and all that stuff yeah. so um, another really important note about documentation is that um, when you send documentation to employees, so even if you have verbal conversations where you give people paperwork in person or whatever it might be, always follow up in writing. It's extremely important that you document, you know, the date that the employee requested to leave, when you gave them the paperwork, all of that, because that can have huge implications later for whether or not you ignored a leave request or mm -hmm. had to take attendance action if they never gave paperwork back. So um, following up with the email that um, has a read receipt so you can prove the employee uh, 
I'm sorry, prove that the uh, employee received it mm -hmm. or even sending a letter, right? A lot of employees maybe don't use email, so sending a letter certified so you get proof of receipt is really important as well. Seems like overkill, but I'm telling you it can save you a ton of headache. Well, that's the thing. You, uh, all we talk about like on so many of these videos is documentation, documentation, yeah. documentation. And there are different ways that you can do that, whether it's having the employee sign something if they don't have email. Because we do have some people who uh, employees don't have email or they're not um, good with computers and just don't have that capability. Well, you can give the, something to them and have them sign it. You, you want anything you can possibly do to make sure that you can prove that they received it, that they understand it, and even have a clause in there that they understand mm -hmm. and their next steps. Because again, you can't be chasing everybody if it, they have a next step of filling yeah. something out, but they know it's their next they know it's in their hands. Um, and we've, we've said money in many episodes, you're unfortunately pretty much guilty until mm -hmm. you're proven innocent as an employer. So having that documentation or electronic stamp or something that shows proof of receipt or that you notified someone is, you have to have that. Yeah, it's going to save you. And like you said, it seems like overkill, but... Yeah, little I, steps now save big headaches later. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it would be more work for you than right. just having somebody sign it right Absolutely. there and then get in that get in that habit of other things i mean i don't think employees think anything of it right now signing signing things that are you know, policies in place work, yes. i mean it's new york state law in a lot of cases to have yes. yeah. it signed off on so all right so other than that um the next point we want to make is cheers, cheers. yeah sorry sorry we're interrupting it's, well it's getting a little toasty <laughs> it's a little parched we're a little parched in the hot, the the hot <laughs> Um, all right, so the fourth kind of tip here um, for, you know, leave best practices is not to retaliate. So this term retaliate, Jen, it's not an old word, but it's a, a new word, kind of newish word to the employment landscape in the last few years. Every single law that, you know, New York State or the federal government's passing has basically a non-retaliation provision, which says you cannot retaliate against employees for exercising their protected rights, and that includes their protected rights to take or request leave. So um, the point is here, you want to be extremely mindful as the employer or even your managers need to be very mindful that once an employee requests leave, anything you do after that could be perceived, if it's negative, could be perceived as retaliation for that leave request or taking leave because obviously it may not be a very popular thing with the employer that mm -hmm. someone's taking time off, which is an inconvenience. So timing is everything here. Um, if you were considering um, taking, giving someone a warning or something like that, definitely don't do it once they request the leave. Um, you know, we'll have to, I would reach out to a professional at that point and, mm -hmm. and discuss your options from there. But um, timing, you know, will look bad in that situation. So make sure you're considering that. And then just mindful of attitude, Jen, because we're all human, you know? It we all have attitudes. To, it could be hard to not wear your emotions on your sleeve, but as an employer, as a manager, um, even if it's not ideal that someone is putting you in a situation mm -hmm. when they're taking leave and they need to take the leave, you want to make sure that doesn't come out in your treatment of the employer, uh, the employee. So make sure you still give them overtime like everybody else and treat them exactly the same way as before. And I think it's important to keep in mind that you as a business owner are trying to protect your business and there are some things that you have to do to go above and beyond to protect that. And it's the employee's interpretation of your tone. Right. Right. It's it's perception. when it's perception of when they feel um, harassed or discriminated against or, or any of that. So you want to make sure that um, you're being very clear. And again, any Fair, sort of consistent. documentation, yeah, yeah. any documentation with all employees. Um, I don't care if it's your brother. Um, and you, you know, you have a brother and you're, you're working with everyone because and then it could not be your, your brother's issue, but then other employees that right. um, are going to claim discrimination that you're treating your brother in a different way because he's not signing off on some policy. Yep. It's all employees. Go back to number two, which is creating that policy and plan and, you know, make sure that you're following it. Yeah, I have my funny. husband sign policies all the time. Oh, that's, Empty the dishwasher. When that it's, sounds smart. That's, <laughs> he's clear. Notes, I, I don't make me refer to the policy of the household. 
Uh, probably most women are the HR uh, people up there. Yeah, so, yeah I can see that. <laughs> All right, John, final tip, train your managers. So even if you're an HR person in the business, even if you're an owner watching this and you think, you know, you know the policies, you know the rules, you know the documentation, you know not to retaliate, mm -hmm. your managers need to know that too because as we've talked about in other episodes, they are basically the representation of your business. Everything they do or don't do is you doing or not doing is the business and you're liable for everything they do. So they need to know to you know, refer people up if they're expressing a need for leave, um, not ignore it, not discipline for attendance issues that clearly are things that someone would qualify for leave for, and also obviously not to retaliate um, or harass employees for requesting leave or taking leave. Yeah. And that's the thing, you don't know what you don't know. And if you know, managers can be different to the owner as they are to employees. So this goes back to having quarterly even performance reviews to talk to your employees um, where the, there's a skip level. So now you're talking to the employees about their their manager. So mm -hmm. they feel comfortable talking to you about Getting it. Getting feedback. Um, yeah. And even if, you know, if, if it's possible, even having a couple people because that person may not feel comfortable talking to their manager who's your his sister, right? Mm -hmm. And then it, it's a little awkward. <laughs> so just always having that open communication with different lines that don't seem um, yeah. to cross um, is very important. So yeah, communicate expectations to everybody, including yeah. those managers who are the ones that are going to know about these issues employees have before you do, and so they know whether to flag it up the you know flagpole or not. So. So that's it, Jen. Pretty hey. simple. Hey. Five easy steps on how to manage leave better. This stuff is so much more prevalent than ever. It's also stuff that more and more claims are being filed about. So um, we'll have some follow-up um, stuff in writing on, on these uh, tips as well. But make sure you take a look and take some action here. Sounds good. We should thank our fans for being here. We got some fans back here. They're, blo Ooh, they're blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> it was so lame. I'm sorry. It's a Monday. There's been some good Monday. jokes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, um, thank you for watching our unfiltered HR series. It's starting to get more and more unfiltered uh, yeah. as we progress. Um, so thank you for watching, and thank you to Poplar Hill Estates and Illuminated Landscapes for hosting us in this beautiful venue. Yes. Um, and thank you, Penny, for the, the drinks and the snacks that we have. Uh, Joe told us not to eat on camera, so like I immediately want to just start like What's, eating on what camera. What is it with like, the sound thing? Yeah, for those <laughs> yeah, people that have that. It'll sound like, really loud, like a little chipmunk. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much. Um, please, if you would like to host us for our next video, email us at unfilteredhr at completepayroll.com. Any content suggestions? Yeah. We're Reach always out with any questions you have about this content or other episodes as well. All of it. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again. Have a good day. Cheers. Summer.